Hello, this is Dr. Miller with your next assignment in Microsoft Word. You will need to download this document before we can get started. There's a link in the description below titled Mark Twain's The Bad Little Boy. So all you have to do is right click on that link and download the document to your computer. Go ahead and pause the video and I'll be waiting right here for you to come back. Right, so I'm guessing now that you have this document open on your computer in Microsoft Word. This is a story of The Bad Little Boy by Mark Twain. Because of the age of the document, there are no restrictions to using it. In fact, you work for a firm that publishes old manuscripts on the web, and this is the next one they want to add to their list. But this manuscript has some issues that need to be taken care of before you can make it public. There are formatting issues and spelling issues, and then you will need to preview it for the web to see if it will retain the corrections you made. So let's get going. First of all, the font is all wrong for what your company uses. The company normally uses Times New Roman, which is one of the most used fonts and very readable for most people. So we will need to change the entire document so all the words are in Times New Roman. There are a few different ways to select all the words at one time, but the fastest is to learn the shortcut, which is Command A on a Mac or Control A if you're on a PC. So go ahead and pause the video to select all of your text, then head back here for the next step. So now I'll make sure I'm in the Home tab and go ahead and look at the options. As you can see, the font being used is Verdana. I can click on the drop down and see all the different fonts that are available. Yours will be different because it depends on the computer you're using and what fonts were loaded on it, but everyone should have Times New Roman. Since Times New Roman is going to be way down this list, I'm going to take another shortcut and just click inside the box with the fonts and start typing times. As you can see, it comes right up. Now all I have to do is hit enter or return and all my text changes so that it's in Times New Roman. Also, I want to make sure the size is 12. So I'll click on the drop down right next to the fonts and then click on 12. Now go ahead and pause the video and make these changes. Now that those basic changes have been made, I need to make some additional changes to the title. So I'll need first to highlight the title. Now there are several ways you can highlight text depending on how much of it you have. First, since it's just one line, an easy way is to bring my cursor over to the left until the cursor turns into an arrow, and then click one time, and that will highlight that one line. Or I can position my cursor at the beginning of the line, hold my left button down, and drag all the way across. Or lastly, I can click anywhere in the sentence and triple click. I especially like this way when I need to highlight an entire paragraph. However you decide to highlight this line, pause the video and do so now. Now your publisher requires that all headlines be in size 18 and centered. So we will click on the drop down for font size and then click on 18. Next we will center it by finding the area in the paragraph section that shows the different types of alignment and click Center Text. Notice that with a lot of these buttons, when I hover my cursor over the button, it will give me the name of that button. So that's a very nice feature in Microsoft Word and many other programs. Go ahead and pause the video and make these changes. Now the writer's name also needs to be centered, so I'll do that just like I did with the title, but it also needs to be in italics. So while the text is still highlighted, I will click the slanted eye over here in the text panel, and that will make all the words highlighted italic. 
Now you'll notice that all the sentences kind of run together, and there's no separation between the paragraphs. Your publisher requires that all text should have an indent to show where a new paragraph starts. So I'll want to select all again. But you'll see when I use the select all shortcut, it selects the title and the author, and I don't want those to have an indent. So I'll need to highlight everything except the headline and the author. So what I'll do here is click one time in front of the first word that needs to be highlighted. Then I'm going to scroll down to the last word. Once I find that last word, I am going to hold down shift and then click after the last word that needs to be highlighted. Again, you want to hold down shift before you click that second time. That way all of the words in between those two clicks are highlighted. So go ahead and pause the video and come back when you've highlighted all the words except the title and the author. So the next thing we'll need to do is to create the indent. Remember, keep those sentences highlighted while we do this next part. To make this change to our entire highlighted section, you'll need your paragraph format window. If you're on a Mac, you'll need to click the format menu, then click paragraph. If you're on a PC, you'll need to click on this small button at the bottom right of the format section. Once your format window is open, you'll see that there are several sections you can work with. General, indentation, and spacing. Our first priority is indentation. So I'll click on the drop down next to the word special and you'll see that we have two choices. Click on first line and click OK. Now you can see that all of our paragraphs have an indent on the first line of the paragraph. Go ahead and pause the video and make these changes. Now we can make our final change, which is to make everything double spaced. So let's use that shortcut again of Control A on the PC or Command A on the Mac to select all. We could bring up the format window again, but why do that when there's this handy button in our ribbon up here? If you'll go up to the paragraph section, find the button that has a double arrow on the left and a drop down button on the right. When you hover over it, you can see that this is the line and paragraph spacing drop down. Go ahead and click on that button, then click on the 2.0 to make the document double spaced. Go ahead and pause the video and complete these steps. Scrolling through the document, I can see by the little squiggly red lines that there are a few misspelled words. And in fact, the word Sunday has been misspelled several times. Now I could right click on each misspelled word, but there is a shorter way to do this. To fix this quickly, I'll click on the review tab and over on the left is a spelling and grammar tool. You can see it right off because it has this ABC with a check mark under it. So I'll click on that and it will bring up the spell check window. This window will take us through all of the words that are misspelled. Now the first one that comes up is Sunday and I have a few options. In this section, I could choose to ignore the word that's been highlighted. If for some reason I wanted it spelled that way, I could choose to ignore all, or I could choose to add, which would add that word to the dictionary. But in this case, I know that this word is definitely misspelled, so I want to change it. Microsoft Word has been nice enough to give me some suggestions. And I noticed that the first word is the correct spelling. I could click change and that one word would be corrected. But since I noticed that Sunday was misspelled several times, I'm going to click change all. So all the misspelled instances of Sunday will be corrected. Now I'm taken to the next misspelled word. I'm only given one suggestion and I'm going to click the change all since I'm not sure if I've misspelled that word in other places. The next word that comes up is James's. That seems weird, so let's read that sentence. Everything about the boy was curious. Everything turned out differently for him 
from the way it does for the bad Jameses is in the books. So in this case, Twain is referring to more than one James. So the word is really not misspelled. So I'll just click ignore. Now I'm taken to the next misspelled word. I'll check the right spelling and click change all. Now the next word is a word that is unfamiliar to me. Because this story was written by Mark Twain many, many years ago, I've done some research and found that this word would have been acceptable at that time. So I'll click ignore. And the next word is the same, something that Mark Twain purposely used. So I'll click ignore for that one as well. And now the spelling and grammar check is complete. So please pause the video and make sure you make all of the corrections that need to be made. The next thing we'll need to do is to check and make sure the formatting is the same on the web as it is for print. To do that, we'll go over to the View tab, click on it, and over to the far left, you can see that we are in Print Layout. That just means that everything we see here is exactly what it will look like if we printed this document out on a printer. But if we click on Web Layout, we can see what it will look like when it is published on the web. And as you can see, it retained our indentations. It retained our double spacing. It retained our italics for the author and our larger font for the title. So we're good. Let's take it back to print layout in order to save. So please make sure you check that subscribe button down below and the little bell next to it so you'll be notified when my next tutorial is published. Also, if you'd like to practice what you learned here today, I provided an additional document below for you to do that. The document is titled, The Most Dangerous Game, Unformatted. If you have any questions about this video or the additional document, please make sure you comment below and I will get back with you. Also, if you have any suggestions for future Microsoft Word tutorials, please add those below as well. I'd like to keep these tutorials as relevant as possible. So if there's something specific you need to learn, please make sure you include that information.